r slash no sleep posted by you slash horror junkie 123 i got a job at long john silvers i'm not so sure i want it anymore i watched greg's face drain of color he bolted over to her clasping his meaty hands onto her shoulders trina it'll be okay just stay calm tell me which one of the entities was it the slime girl the moment she said that greg loosened up seriously trina you get everyone all worked up over that? You locked her in the east wing, right? Trina averted her gaze, her cheeks burning red. Yeah, obviously. We're good, then. Worst that'll happen is she'll climb up the wall and try to hide on the ceiling. Lloyd, can you take care of it? He nodded and began to trot out of the room. I'll go with him. It's been a slow day for us, Ahmad said, grabbing what appeared to be a specialized tranquilizer gun on his way out. I stood there scratching my head. Uh, Greg? What's up, buddy? What the hell is a slime girl? Alana face pumped herself. And on that note, I've got work to do, she scoffed, returning to prodding the remains at her station. Exactly what the name says. A girl made of slime, Greg replied. Trina stood beside him, shaking her head. You must be new around here, she said, pursing her lips. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock, I muttered. Trina narrowed her eyes on me. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. This is Trina. She's our nutritionist. She's in charge of putting together the meals for all our creepy crawlies. She's sort of an assistant to Lana when she's not making lunches. Hey! I do more than help out and do a little cooking, she huffed, slugging Greg in the arm. He was completely unfazed. Oh yeah? Like what? Like, um... Exactly. Now, show Mason here a warm welcome. Hi, nice to meet you, Trina mumbled under her breath, never daring to make eye contact with me. Trina. I said a warm welcome. That was cold as ice. Try again. Uck, fine. Trina's face contorted into the biggest fake grin I'd ever seen. She looked like the Cheshire cat overdosing on crack. Hi, I'm Trina. Nice to meet you, Mason. I'm sure you'll make a swell addition to the team. There. Happy now? Yes, good job. Greg said, patting her on the back. Ah, uh, nice to meet you too, I guess. For the record, I preferred the cold greeting. That was just... creepy. Trina's face turned red as a fire engine. Oh, I am gonna fuck. You. Up. You've really done it now, you methed out pea-brained weirdo, she fumed, charging toward me. Greg clasped her head with one hand, keeping her at arm's length. Trina aimlessly punched at the air, as if she thought she was really doing some damage. Is she always like this? You've got a little firecracker on your hands. Greg sighed. Unfortunately, yes. We both stood there and watched Trina's fruitless attempt at violence until her arms stopped swinging and went limp by her sides. Are you done now? Greg asked, cocking an eyebrow. Why? Why yeah, Trina sputtered, struggling to catch her breath. If I let you go, are you going to try attacking Mason again? No. The instant Greg released her, Trina lunged for me. Greg rolled his eye and grabbed her by the waist, hoisting her over his shoulder like it was nothing. Let me go. This isn't fair, Trina shouted, futilely pounding her fists against Greg's back. If you're going to act like a child, then I'll treat you like one, he replied, plopping her down into a rolling chair. He pushed her into a corner and stopped, wagging a finger at her like a parent scolding a child. You're in time out. Face the wall, and don't move a muscle until I get back. Got it? Yeah jerk, she muttered, pouting and folding her arms across her chest. Alana, babysit her while I'm gone, please. She's gotta learn her lesson, Greg requested, his rubber boots squeaking against the linoleum flooring as he made his way back to me. Got it, boss, Alana said, flashing him a thumbs up, all the while maintaining focus on her work. Alrighty, let's go back to the lobby to finish your interview, shall we? I nodded as Greg led the way back to my sworn enemy, the stairs. Why can't you people in? Vest in an elevator, I wheezed. That climb back up was worse than I'd thought. I really needed to implement some cardio into my daily workout regimen. Greg chuckled, his boisterous laughter ringing throughout the empty dining area. An elevator? In a Long John Silvers? Yeah, that wouldn't raise any red flags. Okay, fair point, I retorted, slowly catching my breath. I'm gonna take a seat. I'm dying over here. Take your pick. The lobby's all yours. 
I slid into a booth and sprawled out as Greg took his seat opposite me. He grinned at me as I finally began to regain my composure. Don't worry. You get used to the stairs over time. Now, are you ready to continue the interview? Yeah. I'm good now. I just have one quick question, though. Hit me with it. Why did you show me all that? I mean, I would never in a million years, but what's to stop me from sending in an anonymous tip about this place? Kind of a big risk to go showing potential new hires that stuff, don't you think? I was going to go over that later, but I might as well get it out of the way, Greg said, pursing his lips. Who the hell would believe you? Long John Silver's housing a bunch of monsters? No one in their right mind would buy that for even a second. As for incentive to keep your lips sealed, this is a government-run operation. You utter one peep, and they'll send a guy to wipe you off the face of the planet faster than you can shit your pants. Catch my drift? Yep. Loud and clear. Damn, I'm in deeper than I thought. This had better be worth it. Moving on. We're looking for another keeper. I don't have too much work history to go off of, but I really think you have the balls for it. After a decade in the slammer, I'm sure you can hold your own. Not to mention, Alice and Kratos seem to take a liking to you, he said, wiggling his eyebrows up and down. I nearly threw up at the thought of that. The two most terrifying creatures I'd ever seen in my entire 30 years of existence taking a liking to me? Nope. No, thanks. Great. They seem... friendly. So, assuming I get offered the job, how much does it pay? 200 grand a year. I instantly perked up. At that moment, I must have looked like a cartoon character with big green dollar signs in his eyes. That was more money than I'd ever dreamed of. Wow. Okay, um that's great. It's not too shabby. So, I think I've seen enough. I know you got what it takes. The job's yours if you want it. I'll take it. Thank you so much, Mr. Greg. I promise I won't let you down, I said, standing and enthusiastically shaking his hand. That's what I like to hear. When can you start? Greg asked, obliterating my fingers with his handshake. Ow. I mean, I can start as soon as you'll have me. Great. Fill out these papers and show up back here bright and early at 8 a.m. sharp. Glad to have you aboard, he boomed, releasing me, while producing a stack of documents from his raincoat. What the hell? Does he always keep those on him? Got it. Thank you again for the opportunity. I really needed this. Don't mention it. But just so you know, this job is no cakewalk. There's a reason we get paid so handsomely. As I would come to find out, Greg was absolutely right. I should have known that a paycheck that high comes with a mountain of risks. I left the restaurant feeling like I had won the lottery. Yeah, I just found out that monsters were real, and yes, I was absolutely terrified of interacting with them, but as long as I could learn to survive, I'd be fine, right? Surely, nothing could go wrong dealing with a pack of vicious man-eating cryptids. I was going to be A-OK. -okay. At least, that's what I told myself. I practically skipped up to the door through the parking lot when I showed up for my first shift the next day. I was on cloud 9. 200 grand a year and I was getting to work with a hot chick? Count me in. I giddily reached for the door, and as luck would have it, it was locked. I rolled my eyes. Of course. Either Greg had forgotten about me, or someone had decided to haze the new guy. I pulled out my phone, realizing that I had no other option, and called Greg. He took a long time to pick up, but once he did, I could tell that he was woefully unprepared to tackle the day. Hey Mr. Greg, it's Mason. You know, your new hire. Uh, can you let me in? The door's locked. I was met with perturbed grumbling and what sounded like sheets rustling. Fuck, I'm late again. Sorry about that, buddy. I'll have Trina come let you in. She's got something she needs to tell you anyway. Seriously, Greg? You could have sent anybody down there, preferably Elena, and you picked the adult toddler? Come on, man. Woohoo. I can't wait. That's the spirit. I'll see you when I get there. And with that, he hung up on me. I was beginning to realize that either Greg didn't understand what sarcasm was, or he was a master of satire. And I was leaning toward the latter. I reclined against the side of the building, trying, and probably failing, not to look shady. Trina sure was taking her sweet ass time. At that rate, I would have rather watched paint dry. I was beginning to nod off when the door beside me swung open. Get your ass sorry ass in H here before. Phew. I am out of shape, Trina sputtered, face red as a beet. From four flights of stairs? Ha. Loser. Hey. 
I may be out of shape, but I can still kick your ass. And with that, the little demon began rapid fire punching my back. Honestly, it felt kinda good. She might have gotten a knot out. Ah, thanks for that. I was feeling a little stiff. I'm sure that you probably locked me out, so that's karma for ya. I did not. I mean. Maybe I did. But you deserved it, she huffed as we made our way to the break room. Look, whether I deserved it or not is up for debate, I said, holding the door open for her, but at least I didn't throw a temper tantrum and get put in time out. Trina grumbled incoherently to herself as we descended. A smug grin inched across my face. She really was like a toddler. Oh, yeah, before I forget, Greg told me over the phone that you had something to say to me. What's up? He wanted me to say sorry for yesterday, but we both know that I'm not, she retorted without even sparing a glance back at me. Fair. I've got a proposal for you. I won't tell Mr. Greg that you didn't apologize if you give me another one of those back massages later. That got her attention. Trina stopped in her tracks, spinning around to face me. A malicious grin spread across her lips, and she offered me her hand. You won't tell Mr. Callaway and I get to take my anger out on you? You've got yourself a deal. I gladly accepted her handshake. Callaway. So that's his last name. Oh well. I'm still gonna call him Mr. Greg. Definitely suits him better. Trina and I proceeded to the control room in silence. I tried to keep my eyes glued to the floor to avoid any incidents like the previous day, but unfortunately, I caught Alice smiling and waving at me again. Had she even moved at all? Creepy. Once we arrived at the control room, we were greeted by the remainder of the crew. Everyone occupied their previous spots, Alana was hard at work typing something into a computer, while Lloyd and Ahmad were shooting the shit, each holding a styrofoam cup of coffee. Hey! Newbie. Good to see you again, buddy. Wasn't sure if you'd be back, Ahmad said, setting his cup down, and making his way over to me. A couple of creepy crawlies aren't gonna scare me off so easily. You're gonna have to try harder than that to get rid of me. Well, I'm glad you said that. Because today, you're getting some on the job training. And we start right now. Follow me, Ahmad said, grabbing a tranquilizer gun from a stand beside the door. I gulped. Why did I have to say that? Me and my big mouth. I followed Ahmad back to the area with the three doors. He led me to one that said West Wing in faded, barely legible letters. Don't worry. I'll start you off with one of the more tame ones, he smirked as he held the door open for me. Uh-oh. Something tells me that this won't be fun. I could feel butterflies fluttering in my stomach as the door shut behind us. I had a sinking feeling that whatever Ahmad had planned, it wouldn't be good. Not for me at least. As we walked, I realized that each enclosure had a door with a screen above it monitoring the exhibit's inhabitants. See that? Ahmad asked, pointing to a window encased in one of the door frames. Yeah. What about it? It's one-way glass. We can see them, but they can't see us. Oh, cool. That makes me feel a little safer, I guess. I was lying. It didn't make me feel safer. Before I knew it, Ahmad came to a halt underneath one of the monitors. There was a plaque holder beside each window that had a name emblazoned on it for each cryptid. This one said Clarissa. Why are we stopping here? What's a Clarissa? Ahmad face pumped himself. Clarissa's not the thing's species. It's her name, Yaninkampoop. This entity is one of the black-eyed children. Ever heard of them before? My brows furrowed and I shook my head. No, what are those? According to the internet, they knock on people's doors at night and try to gain entry to their homes. That's... it? Sounds kinda lame, I scoffed. A kid who couldn't even break an entering? Piece of cake. Well, unfortunately for everyone, the stories are tame in comparison to the real thing. This one was found at a small college. Turned out the dean had summoned all sorts of entities. Once he was killed, the creatures went with him. All of them except for Clarissa, that is. Alright, so what do we need to do, then? Follow me. I'll show ya. But be careful. Don't speak directly to Clarissa, and do not touch her. She really doesn't like that, Ahmad said, punching in a coat on a keypad beside the door. I watched as it whirred open. I nodded, diligently obeying Ahmad's orders, and headed toward the entrance. I felt as if something was off. Something I couldn't quite put my finger on. But I noticed it too late. Right as we were about to make it through the entryway, Ahmad sidestepped me and shoved me inside. He quickly leapt back and pressed a button on the keypad. I stared in complete shock as the door slammed shut, locking me inside. 
What terrified me the most wasn't the small, dark room or the sinister being sitting in the rocking chair in the corner. No, what shook me to my core was the devilish grin plastered across Ahmad's face as he abandoned me to my fate.